These days, it's the patient who tells the doctor to lie to their immediate family. Yeah, I know I'm dying. Don't tell my family that. Hi, I'm Vernon and this is Kit and we just watched The Farewell. Kit, what did we just watch? Uh, we watched the Chinese version of Lost in Translation uh, without the romance. Okay, Sofia Coppola said that Lost in Translation is about uh, two people who meet and then nothing happens. So uh, I think uh, The Farewell is about uh, this granddaughter who goes back to China uh, to see her dying grandmother and then nothing happens. The family tells her under no circumstances is anyone allowed to tell Granny she's dying. We all know she is. We're going to see her pay our last respects. We're not going to tell her. We're going to pretend that your cousin is going to get married. As an excuse for all the relatives to come back and to see uh, Grandma for the last time. And that's exactly what happens. They don't tell her. Yes, and nothing much actually happens. Even though it's like a special occasion, uh, the fake wedding, but it feels a bit like a slice of life uh, kind of story. It takes place over three days, I think. Three or four days in China. In uh, Peking, actually. Which, which is not a location that you normally see. All the old neighbourhoods, all the old hutongs are being torn down in Peking and basically replaced with all these tall residential blocks. Kind of like the ones you see in Koyani's Gatsi. The good thing about this movie is that you do spend a lot of time uh, uh, with the family, uh, with the granddaughter and the grandmother. So uh, you get to know them. So I, I think that's what uh, makes the, the story work. I don't think the story works for me that much after the first half hour. It seems like they ran out of situations and stories to tell. The premise is simple, right? In so-called Asian culture, when a patient is dying, the doctor tells the patient's relatives, immediate family, and only the immediate family know, and then everyone lies to the patient and say, you're all right, you're doing fine. It used to be a lot more common in what we call the West uh, 40 years ago. Since then, however, the ethics of healthcare developed to a certain extent where everyone in the West have agreed that this is not an ethical thing to do and in fact have made it somewhat illegal. I don't think it works. Then, if you know that this is the common thing that is done, then if people tell you that you're okay, even if you really are okay, you wouldn't believe them. Yeah, one of the interesting things about the premise of this film is it doesn't actually work if you think, if you think about it because it's sort of a genre trope already. Yeah, but I uh, feel uh, gra Grandma has third stage of final terminal stage lung cancer and she, she doesn't know she's going to die, really? You would be in a lot of pain. You would know that there is something wrong. The premise is already on that, that kind of shaky foundations. And it's also not explored. They just take the situation and repeat as, it. as given. But she doesn't like really um, try uh, different uh, strategies or rationalizations uh, to yeah. really fight against it. In this kind of very simple premise, the granddaughter has only two solutions or two ways of working it out. Either go along with the deception or try to hint to a grandma. Or convince the relatives uh, to tell, to change their minds and actually tell the grandma or to just go against the wishes of the relatives and tell the grandma straight out. None of these actually happen. Or, e or were even really explored. Which is rather strange for me because as a film that has a Sundance pedigree stamped on it, you'd expect some exploration of the dilemma. You'd expect the characters to be developed classically through how they react to the dilemma. But yep. none of that happens. Even though they're pretending, they're not pretending very well. So you know how conflicted and sad everyone is. Not just a granddaughter. And yet 
they are so conflicted and sad that you wonder why why doesn't Grand Mike really pick up on the facial and social cues? The lead actress, the granddaughter, uh, what's her name? A- Aquafina? Yes, uh, professionally known as Aquafina because I think she's a rapper. What? She's a rapper in okay. real life. And of course, uh, Aquafina was one of the breakout stars uh, for her supporting role in Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, she's really good here. I did not watch Crazy Rich Asians, but I just might because of her. Uh, she's she's really expressive here, uh, a very sympathetic character. Very sympathetic, but I think she's a far better comedian than a dramatic actress. Oh, okay. Although, at certain points, I was wondering if the film couldn't decide whether it wanted to be a comedy or drama or an art film. In an interview, the writer and director, uh, Lulu Wang, who is um, Chinese, uh, brought up in uh, China, but I think now based in Burma or something, um, she did say that when she was looking for financing uh, for the movie, she was under pressure to like make the movie more of a comedy, but she refused uh, to do so because it didn't feel right. There is a lot of right irony in the setup of the film that the director puts in place, but never fires off in the end. I, I think she was more interested uh, in the characters than in an actual uh, story or plot. I could think of several films or several directors that could have dealt with this in far more uh, ironic and depressing manner. Uh, I'm thinking of Ozu's Tokyo Story and I'm also thinking of Stano Tutti Bene, an Italian film that starred Marcello Mastriani, both of which had basically an elderly person visiting their children whom they were out of touch with for decades. This film feels like an inversion of these two films, except it glosses over or papers over the natural separation and distance that have built up for decades since the children last saw their parent, uh, the, since the granddaughter last saw her granny. Uh, yeah, that's why it's um, they don't re- like really uh, resolve it or anything. They just say, okay, this is the situation, and and, and that's it. Yeah. So this is a situation. There are some scenes that show a little bit about how there are, there's some distance, cultural distance, between the American granddaughter and or well, Chinese society at large. But then it's sort of like. Uh, as soon as it's mentioned, it's dropped away like a potato and never mentioned again. Yeah, that, that's, why, that, that's very odd to me. No, that's why it feels uh, like a slice of uh, life story more than uh, like a really... Great uh, drama. Uh, plotted out uh, exploration. For the runtime, it, it felt a bit long to stay at just that level of premise, characters reacting to premise or premise just staying where it is yeah i was i was hoping for more to happen but it's fine i i found it entertaining uh the visuals were good uh there's some interesting uh camera work uh they keep a lot of like uh not really a, a one take scene but uh they don't cut very often they stay uh, quite long uh 10 20 30 seconds on yeah. a medium wide shot. Mostly um, the scenes involving the family. You do feel they, they work together as an, an ensemble, but um, that's about it. The sort of long takes are sort of just to showcase the ensemble cast acting. It, it feels very deliberate, uh, very unrushed. But it doesn't feel as artistic and artificial as say Ho Xiao Xian's long takes. They, they also have a long uh, tracking shot of the granddaughter running along the street so when they do have to get a bit fancy uh, they do and it seems quite appropriate. But speaking 
of budgetary constraints, we were kind of shocked to find that the film does have a budget of three million US dollars. It's really shoestring. Yeah, I was fooled because at the end they mentioned Alexa. So for a three million dollar movie, uh, I didn't, ex- I I wouldn't expect them to use an Ari Alexa, but uh, it does look uh, pretty good. It has a very filmic look. I, I think uh, this is a characteristic of the Alexa. The the Alexa is generally regarded to be uh, the best uh, camera around. Uh, there are a few different models, uh, of course, and the top Hollywood movies and those that win uh, Oscars for best uh, cinematography are heavily uh, on the Alexa side, uh, even though uh, the red cameras are also popular. So it was really a surprise to see uh, a low budget movie like that use an Alexa, but yeah, we got great results. I felt a bit cheated because the film did in fact cheat in, on its ending. Not, like you say, the granddaughter chose none of the options and then uh, spoiler the, alert, spoiler alert. and then the situation kind of solves itself for her without her making any difficult decisions without the grandmother learning anything and without any one in the extended family or ensemble cast of characters learning anything or changing at all yeah so the, the cheat at the end or what felt like a cheat uh if it's true um it it's a severe indictment of the chinese healthcare system uh, really bad, bad diagnosis. <laughs> yes. Well, because this movie is based, uh, it stays at the front. Uh, movie is based on a true lie. The lie being, uh, the lie told to the grandmother that she's she's fine. But uh, so based on, well, how much of it is is really true? So I don't know. If you're going to base a film on a lie, then at least craft a more, you know, narratively. Fulfilling line? Uh, I, I would recommend this movie, but I would not recommend it uh, like really highly. I, I don't see how it won uh, awards at uh, film festivals. Maybe it's because no one's made anything like The Banquet since Ang Lee. I'm a little embarrassed to compare this film to Ang Lee's Banquet to Mastriani's uh, Everybody's Fine or Ozu's Tokyo Story or even Sofia Ford Coppola's Lost in Translation. There is, even if you compare this to Lost in Translation, there is tremendous gulf in storytelling. You really felt uh, something at the end of Lost in Translation. I, I mean, it, it, you really get, get, get uh, punched in the stomach, uh, even though Nothing really dramatic happens. Uh, I, I was kind of obsessed with Lost in Translation for a while. I watched it uh, many times over. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't have a similar uh, feeling for this movie. Yeah, so um, that's all we got. And we'll see you next week. Bye.